Hey everyone, and how are you all doing? I'm sure you have all seen, just like me, those millions of different YouTube videos. MCU Phase 4, what's next? Well, this one is going to be covering some things that those touch on, but it's going to go much more in depth. And this is all thanks to my main man who has written this script in general, and that is from Steve. Hal and Steve themselves. It's these two guys that are these MCU veterans, and they know everything about Marvel, so I'm going to get right to it and explain everything to you. Here we go. Avengers Endgame has come and gone, and the Marvel faithful are wondering what's next. Well, if the internet rumors are right, then one of Marvel's most famous comic runs will make its leap into the MCU. I'm talking about Secret Wars. You know, that comic book series that's been mentioned in just about every YouTube video about Phase 4. But how much do you actually know about Secret Wars? If you're not a Marvel 616 diehard, then you might not know that there are actually five different Secret War or Secret Wars titled storylines. It's pretty confusing, right? And if you weren't confounded enough, Marvel's produced a ton of secret titled content throughout the years to add an extra dash of what the hell is going on for good measure. Well, don't worry Marvel theoryites, I am going to break down each of these main secret Marvel Marvel titles for you. First up is the original The Plain Cheese Slice with no extra toppings of the secret comics Marvel Superheroes Secret Wars. This book was originally published from 1984 to 1985, and it's your quintessential 80s comic. Just like every other comic from the 80s, there wasn't really a need for a super complicated plot. A big bad guy called the Beyonder decided to abduct a handful of superheroes and a handful of supervillains from Earth, pit them together against each other, and chill while the punches flew. Really, that's it. As far as source material goes for the MCU's next big Avengers flick, this Secret Wars just ain't gonna cut it. It's a fun read nonetheless, and I highly recommend it if you want to see the origins of the Beyonder race, which plays a pretty important role in Marvel Comics about 20 years later. Next is Secret Wars 2, published from 1985 to 1986. This mini-series was a direct sequel to the first series. I can sum the story up pretty easily. Ever see the TV show Lucifer? If you haven't, it's a story about the devil slumming it here on Earth. There are there are a ton of gods or aliens living among men shows out there, but Lucifer is the one that comes to mind for my Secret Wars 2 analogy. You know all those quirky, funny, and cute moments where Lucifer is just tickled to bits by humanity? Well, that's basically Secret Wars 2. In this miniseries, the Beyonder visits Earth to understand humans a bit more. While here, he falls in love with life bonds over a few women, and very briefly becomes a gangster. You remember when I said the first Secret Wars miniseries was a quintessential 80s comic book? Well, I take that all back. Secret Wars 2 is definitely the most 80s of them all. As you might have guessed, this definitely isn't the Secret Wars that everyone is discussing for Marvel's Phase 4. The third time Marvel used Secret Wars in a title was in Secret Wars 3. I know, I know it's not really original at all, but Marvel was achieving record sales with all of these titles, so they decided to triple down on them. This wasn't actually a standalone miniseries like the other books. It was published in the Fantastic Four ongoing comics in 1988, a bit of a downgrade from the status of the previous events. In this series, the Beyonder was living a totally chill life in another universe, but like all good things in the Marvel Universe, he was disrupted by Doctor Doom and the Fantastic Four. They squabble, the secrets of the Beyonders is discovered, and in order to achieve true zen-like peace, the Beyonder is convinced to turn himself into a cosmic cube, which was his destiny all along. The secret of the Beyonder is pretty important for the future of the Marvel Universe. By the way, they're the extra-dimensional beings who are more or less omnipotent, and they have the ability to create cosmic cubes. Those cubes, which were thought just to be cool little boxes of powers, are actually derived from the Beyonder's extra dimension. When power from their dimension leaked into ours without a proper cube to be stored in, it gave birth to the Beyonder from these first three Secret War titles. Are you super confused? Don't worry, I'm gonna make things even more brain-scratching. The Beyonder is actually not not a Beyonder, and instead is a sentient cosmic cube, or is a young Beyonder, depending on which writer has the reins of the story at the time. Don't stress much about that, though. This definitely is not the tale everyone is talking about for Phase 4. Let's talk about Secret War. That's right, this time, war is singular. This comic has nothing to do with the Beyonder. This little mini-series from 2005 is well known for its stunning artwork and lengthy delays. In this story, Nick Fury wanted to invade Latveria, the home of Doctor Doom.
Doom. He discovered Doom was building an evil team, so he recruited Marvel's coolest characters, Wolverine, Spider-Man, Captain America, and a few others to neutralize the threat before it ever appears. Not much else going on here, and to be honest, this is a precursor to Secret Invasion. So let's dive right into that. Long story short, Secret Invasion is basically where the Skrulls invaded Earth a long time ago. They have been impersonating heroes for a while and nobody can trust each other. That's it. Personally, I don't want to see this story hit the big screen because it's just kind of boring. Time travel, secret imposters, and it was all just a dream are some of the most damaging plot devices to long-running comic books. If you care about these characters and you care about the stories they participated in, then it's a pretty big slap in the face to undo them for the sake of shock. So, dear Kevin Feige, our comic book movie supreme ruler, do not take this route, please. If you see Secret Invasion, know that it's a scrawl storyline and not tied to the overarching theme of Beyonders. It might be hard to do because Secret Invasion spawned a whole slew of secret theme titles. Whew. You guys are hanging in there, right? If you need a brief interlude, you know, to use the bathroom or, you know, grab another frozen burrito from the freezer, feel free to pause and come right back. All right, let's close this bad boy out. Secret Wars, the 2015 version. This is it. This is the comic that almost everyone is referring to when they talk about Marvel's Phase 4. But let's be honest, Secret Wars is a massive, massive event. We're talking about something a few exponents bigger than Avengers Endgame. So this would probably be Marvel's Phase 6 closer if it made it to the silver screen at all. Secret Wars actually picks up on one of the massive threads in Secret Wars 3 from way back in 1988. The true nature of the Beyonders. In this new series, Doctor Doom is kind of, you know, sort of the hero. He just discovered that the Beyonders were hell-bent on destroying every universe. They had actually inserted a Molecule Man into each one, and when that particular Molecule Man was destroyed, he would act as a detonation device for the destruction of that universe. Doctor Doom, being the secret goody two-shoes we've always known and loved, teamed up with Molecule Man to stop this. Eventually, the pair destroy the Beyonders, but by that point, the multiverse was pretty much destroyed as well. Doctor Doom, empowered by Molecule Man, gathered what remained of the multiverse and created Battle World, a super awesome place with all the cool alternate dimension versions of Marvel characters throughout the years. The actual story of Secret Wars plays like your typical arrogant king realized he's flawed too tale. Doctor Doom tries to hold the disparate fragments of the multiverse together, but they don't naturally fit. When a few surviving members of Marvel's main universe 616 arrive, they start undoing all of Doctor Doom's work. In the climax, Doctor Doom comes to blows with Reed Richards, leader of the Fantastic Four, and remarks that Reed would have probably done a better job with all of this unlimited Molecule Man juice pumping through Doom's veins. Which he probably shouldn't have said, because then Molecule Man immediately grants his powers to Reed Richards. He rebuilds the multiverse with the help of his way overpowered son, you know, kind of like a Goku and Gohan type of moment, and the Marvel Universe goes happily on from there. This is the storyline that everyone on YouTube references when they're theorizing about Marvel Phase 4. Will it actually make it to the big screen? Well, I really can't imagine it arriving any sooner than phase six. And even if it does arrive, it'll really have to be modified. Bigger is not always better, and the MCU really needs to shrink its focus to non-universe threatening stories in order to rebuild viewer interests. I suppose we're really just interested in Secret Wars because it's a chance to see Iron Man again and a chance to one-up Thanos' Infinity Gauntlet shenanigans. But those are petty reasons to see it on the big screen. So what do you guys think? Do you want to see Secret Wars on the big screen? And how did my explainer work out? Are you all set? Or are you all still a bit confused? Maybe try watching the video again, it'll help. Leave some comments, questions, or you know, fanboy rants down below. Maybe you disagree entirely, so let me know. Hit like on this one if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you all in the next one. Until then, remember, with great power comes great responsibility.